Much of what makes modern life predictable, consistent, safe and enjoyable depends on the operations of critical infrastructure. It's really easy to take infrastructure for granted. It tends to operate behind the scenes where we don't necessarily see all of the processes that are necessary for it to deliver its critical resources and services. You flip a switch and the lights come on. You turn on a faucet and have access to clean water. You touch your phone and are connected to information from across the world. But all of this and more depends on the operations of and interconnections between infrastructure assets, systems, operators, supply chains, and management structures. And these all operate together in the dynamic context of evolving community and economic needs, shifting environmental conditions, and persistent risks posed by natural and human-made hazards and threats that might challenge the resilience of those operations. The result of all of this is complexity. Our quality of life is really dependent on our abilities to manage the complexities that are intrinsic to the critical infrastructure that supports it. So the Decision and Infrastructure Sciences Division for more than three decades has supported various sponsor efforts to characterize, to understand, and analyze the critical infrastructure of the United States. And we understand senior leaders will make decisions with or without the best information. So our goal is to try to give them the best information, the best analysis, the best understanding of the infrastructure within their purview so they can make those best decisions. From a government perspective, uh, it's about ensuring the continuity of operations of, of the government itself and of critical functions that the nation relies upon uh, in order to sort of maintain day-to-day -day life as we know it. For private sector, it's about, it's a business operation. It's about ensuring that you can continue to operate as a, uh, as a, as a private entity uh, making revenue and driving home the, the bottom line. When we think about infrastructure resilience, we're essentially trying to understand the ability of an infrastructure asset, system, or operation to anticipate, resist, absorb, respond to, adapt to, or recover from a disturbance stemming from either natural or human-made events. And our work helps to inform that. From the cyber attack um, perspective, we do know that our adversaries are, are mapping our infrastructure. We know that um, they are learning about our infrastructure and, and um, we need to stay a step ahead of those adversaries. So we need to know where those most critical points are and we need to make sure they are protected um, and also that, that we're building redundancies and resiliency into those systems so we don't have those vulnerabilities um, in our country. Most nodes and links in these infrastructure systems don't really matter. So we started off years ago modeling the impact of one substation being flooded. And the result, more often than not, was a very local outage um, or no real problem at all. Um, so we've since built our processes up to a point where we can now model hundreds if not thousands of nodes and links to identify those ones that, if impacted, would truly cause a catastrophic damage. What we talk about is dependencies and interdependencies among uh, infrastructure systems. Hurricane Maria caused catastrophic damage throughout Puerto Rico when it made landfall, resulting in cascading failures across all critical infrastructure sectors, impacting every community and economic function on the island. Our team worked alongside our federal partners for months to collect data and conduct analyses that would be used to inform the identification, prioritization, and packaging of cross-sector infrastructure investments. This involved characterizing population centers, community lifelines, industrial sectors, and their dependencies on critical infrastructure. We then mapped and analyzed the dependencies and interdependencies between these users and the infrastructure, as well as among the infrastructure sectors themselves. This was used to identify opportunities for resilience enhancement and potential future infrastructure development approaches that could help meet Puerto Rico's goals of community resilience and economic stability. So our analysis, our expertise, our technical capabilities are applied to understanding threats as they emerge, trying to anticipate and mitigate those threats, but also preparing for immediate response and longer term recovery actions as well. So before an event happens, anticipating, predicting, and hopefully mitigating those before they occur. But if something were to occur, then ensuring that our response and recovery expertise can be leveraged and applied.